Quad 66, I'm doing a long-term review or update on these GEP RC 1102 14,000 kV motors. And the reason I'm doing that is because I finally killed them and killing them is actually a good thing. Um, I'll get to that in a second. So I feel like a lot of what we see on people's YouTube channels, and, and I do this kind of too, I'm sort of at fault, is um, get excited about something, get something new, and everything when it's new, it kind of works better. And then you sort of fly it and give your impressions, and your impressions are always a little, you know, rose-colored because it's new. So you don't really know how this stuff is until you kind of fly the new off of it, and then you know. So, yeah, I've killed two, two and a half of these four motors. And why that's good is because I actually killed them not by flying them and doing normal stuff, but I actually killed them by doing dumb stuff, which is I was trying to try different props on them. And I was uh, had these HQ, I just got the HQ tri-blade, the, the T65 tri-blades. And I was trying those on here, and I wanted to pull them off without cutting them off. And um, when you, um, these motors, so like all the motors, if you've got a really tight prop fit, and you sit there and really torque this back and forth, eventually that'll loosen this up. And these motors are no different. What's nice about these, and it's different than the happy models is these guys if you've got a really tight prop fit and you go back and forth on this until you loosen that up a lot of times what will happen is you actually break the bond so these uh, the aluminum bell on these is not actually pressed the shaft's not pressed into it it's actually like glued and so once you crack that glue that bell will just spin right on that shaft and so that's part of why I'm saying like I broke these and it's a good thing is because once I got these to where that shaft starts to spin in the aluminum, it's sort of a really slow, gradual process where these are totally usable. Um, but you can spin them with a really tight prop in the in the bell, and it's because and they don't fail like the happy models because rather than being glued, these are press fit in, which is a good thing. So the other good part about breaking them um, is that the way I really truly broke them is is not because spinning the shafts; they're still fine from that regard. It's actually because I bent the shaft. And the way I bent the shaft isn't because I was flying. It's actually because I was get, trying to get off the HQT65 uh, tri-blade props. And I was trying to do that without cutting them off. And then what happened was I ended up bending two of the shafts enough to where you get vibrations. These still fly fine. I just flew a couple packs on it. But they've got enough vibrations to where you get the perf you lose some of the performance and they're just less exciting. So they're still viable. They still fly okay but you lose the edge of the performance. And maybe you can get some of that back by using some like RPM filtering. Um, but I, I this is an F3 board and I'm not really about to go down to D-Shot 150 and RPM filtering and all the rest of it. So um, take home point about these motors is these are good motors and if you don't abuse them, it's gonna be pretty tough to get them to fail. Um, there is enough variability in all things micro FPV that take that with a grain of salt. Um, you might get a batch of these and they might be horrible. That just kind of is the nature of it. But my batch, at least I got a good batch and they held up well to non-abusive stuff. And, and I should say even like abusive flying, but they held up. They Where they failed was abusive like changing props. So if you don't want to kill them, what should you do? So my normal procedure to keep in mind, my motors happy and this is I started this with the happy model motors because they're so sensitive is when I want to change out props I cut and specifically the way I cut is I get this right on the hub and so we'll squeeze right there until the sh until the um, prop loosens up and you can pull it all off the other thing is props tend these these get RC motors the shaft it, it might be actually a little bit bigger than 1.5 millimeters all the props have been fitting tight on it. So I've also been um, drilling them out and that's been helpful. The drill bits I use, these are pricey little suckers, these Kyocera's, but they're nice and you can get them in these really tiny increments. These are 1.48 millimeters and I just throw them in this little hand drill thing and then that way you can drill them out with nice little control and get them to where they press on really well. So with this um, 1.48 millimeter drill bit you kind of go have to go kind of back and forth. You got to go through it and like kind of like scrape them out just a touch to get it loose enough. Versus, I also had a 1.49 millimeter drill bit, um, which I unfortunately broke being done with it. But um, that one was seemed kind of perfect ish with these GFRC 1102s. 
On the flip side, it's always a little scary to go right with perfect for $9, and then if they're too loose, and then people are going to be upset. So I think I think the 1.48 is safe, but it might not get you quite there, and you got to monkey around a little with it. Or you can roll the dice, get the 1.49, and maybe that's going to work perfect for you. All right. So, um, end. Uh, conclusions. Get RC 1102, 14,000 kV. I still recommend them. I like them. Um, in this motor size, uh, this is what I'm going to be um, sticking with. And I'm actually going to try them out for 2S with the um, lower kV. And that's what I got. Um, until next time, cheers.